Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ciphering Weather. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the Saharan air that's choking the Atlantic from tropical development. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to tropicaltibbets.com for Thursday, July 18th, 2024. We have three tropical waves that we are monitoring, one in the Western Caribbean uh, over Central America, another in the middle of the Atlantic approaching the Lesser Antilles and Windward Islands, and then another one trying to come off the coast of Africa by our purple arrows. In between our middle and last tropical wave, you see that milky white color uh, in the satellite image, that is our Saharan air layer, and in that layer is some Saharan air dust, and that is suppressing our tropical development at the moment. Here's the vorticity, the spin and energy in the atmosphere associated with the two tropical waves closer in, uh, highlighted by our red box here. And behind that is the monsoon trough, which is just a elongated piece of vorticity, but none of that is expected to develop over the next seven days. According to the National Hurricane Center, a large part is because of our Saharan air layer and dust that is coming off the coast of Africa, suppressing tropical development. You can see on the ensemble models, the European on the left, the GFS on the right, we're not expecting much development at all. We don't have much of those low pressure squiggly lines that you can normally see for tropical development. It's rather quiet at the moment. So if we switch over to the true color satellite image, you can better see that Saharan air and dust that's been coming off the coast of Africa right by our black arrow. That is the leading edge of where it is currently. And it's getting ready to uh, enter the Caribbean islands. Now we already had a smaller batch move through the Caribbean islands. As you can see, it's engulfing our westernmost tropical wave at the moment. But right behind our uh, second tropical wave, which is coming into the Caribbean uh, as we speak, we have this huge plume of Saharan air and dust that's going to be enveloping the Caribbean this weekend into next week. If we put this into motion, you can see how this over the next 10 days is going to play out, and we're going to have a big swath of Saharan dust coming through the Caribbean, not only once, but twice. So here it is five days from now on Monday the 22nd, and you can see how we'll have Saharan dust not only encompassing much of the Caribbean, but entering the Gulf of Mexico and even traveling up some portions of the east coast of the United States and developing Florida as well. And if we go five more days after that to 10 days out from now to next Saturday the 27th, you can see the dust has thinned out, but it's still in, in covering much of the eastern half of the Caribbean. So places like Hispaniola, Puerto Rico, Trinidad and Tobago, and all the other leeward and windward islands. And that dust is going to create some red looking skies, over, uh, especially at sunset, because when you have the sun overhead and this Saharan air and dust, uh, enveloping the atmosphere, it's going to scatter that light and you're going to see the longer red light uh, wavelengths causing sunsets to look like this. It's also going to cause some uh, breathing problems because of the heat and the dust. And this is what the dust looks like when you're flying up over it in an airplane. Here's another image as well. But in terms of tropical development, it hampers it. And it's not so much, it's the dust it hampers it a little bit, but it's mostly the hot air that is associated with this Saharan air layer. Uh, because what happens is you have this hot air that's over the cooler marine air that's over the Atlantic Basin. And what happens is to have tropical storms develop, you need cooler air aloft uh, to allow the air to rise. Uh, you want the hot moisture at the surface to go up into the atmosphere, create clouds, and it can only do that if it's cooler above uh, where the storm is trying to form. If it's warmer, then the 
ocean temperature is below, it's going to compress the air, sink it, warm it up, dry it out, and you have the opposite. Now, the reason why that also hampers tropical development, not only is sinking air drier, not moist, which is what is needed for thunderstorms, but when you have a storm already that's developed, wind shear causes those storms to die out because the wind shear will take away those thunderstorms and induce dry air into them. So right now we have a lot of wind shear across the Atlantic Basin, as you can see here on the GFS Ensemble model. Over the next five days, you can see all the red is indicating where the wind shear is in the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean, and portions of the main development region. From day six through 10, uh, so Monday through next week, you can see that the wind shear will start to decrease across the main development region, but still be rather strong in the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean. And like I said, the wind shear is what causes thunderstorms that are already trying to form into tropical storms or hurricanes. When that wind shear comes around and blows off the top of that thunderstorm, it induces that dry air, weakening the storm. And we won't see any of this really subside. The tropical dust, I mean, the Saharan air layer, the wind shear for at least 10 to, uh, days to two weeks, as you can see by the Climate Prediction Center in yesterday's video will explain this better. Uh, but you can see by the time we get to week three, the end of July into the first week of August, that's when we'll see tropical development start to come back in the Atlantic as the wind shear will decrease, the Saharan air layer will erode away, some of the dust will dissipate, we'll have a 20% chance of development because we'll have a convectively coupled Kelvin wave coming through along with a robust um, MJO over the uh, African continent pushing out a lot of tropical waves. So the combination of those two could bring some rising air into the Atlantic, eroding away the dry air in the from the Saharan air layer, making the environment much more conducive for tropical development. So we'll be monitoring this region as those tropical waves come off the coast right in the western portions of the main development region into the Caribbean, uh, we'll see potential tropical development at the end of July into August as these storms will come around off the coast of Africa and through the tropics around our Bermuda Azores High. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on deciphering weather, so if you'd like to donate to the channel, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you're new and like detailed with the breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.